do you think? It's the Rossi's, the Ponderosa. I tried to build them just like yours. These are not so big and not so grandiose, but it's still a nice house. Oh, George, it's a fine house. <laughs> fine. Yeah. And the, the clothes, they're not so much Italian. Uh, you look like a regular cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Hello, oh, Gina. How are you? <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> you how are you? This is, uh, this is Candy. Candy, this is Gina. <laughs> Well, hey, everybody, come on, sit down. I want you to taste the wine. Good, oh, good. Oh, I got a fish. I want you all to taste the Vino de Ponderosa, which I name for my friend the Ben Cartwright's uh, ranch. Thank you. With your permission. Oh, of course. Oh, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll drink to that. Vino de Ponderosa. Huh? Hey, well, I'm not to finish. Now, the second reason I ask you is to tell you that when I live in Italy, I work at the land. The land is no mine. The Baron, who owned the land, he come to me and say, Giorgio, someday you're going to be my best man. No, Giorgio Rossi said, nobody else is a man. I think all the time, in the side, I think someday I go to America. I get my own land. I think you're a son of Americano, honorario. That means I'm an honorary Americano. <laughs> <laughs> I think all the time, America. I dream America. Then, five years ago today, I become American citizen. Ah. <laughs> now you can make applause. It's a celebration, then. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. still not to finish. To me, the wine is like a mirror of America's heart. I look inside and I see the faces of many friends. I see much hard work and the sorrow, but I also see the future for the world. I see freedom for everybody and trust. And now I come to another reason why I ask you here. Now I return to the trust which my friend Ben Cartwright to give to me when he lend me money for buy the wine press. Hey, is the United States money good in any bank? <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Uh, I'm not finished. <laughs> And now, I want to tell you that this is only the beginning for Giorgio Rossi and the son. We're going to make a wine. Everybody in the whole world is going to know about the Vino de Ponderosa. Well, sure. we'll that. That. Now we can uh, drink because I finish. I sit down. Sure. <laughs> Giorgio, there's, uh, there's nothing I can add to what you've already said, except to say that we're all very happy and proud. You're not only a neighbor, but a friend. Cheers. Sure. Drink to that. Yeah. See, I drink to that too. Howdy. My name is Gil Saban. I bought the trainer outfit. My land borders this place. Why you put the rope on this man? He's no animal. Ask him. He not believe. This man told me I could drink a spring. Did you tell him that, Jordan? I say he can camp and a drink. Is it my land or my water? You won't have it long, Mr. Rossi, if you let every ragged reservation jumper that comes along dip into it. What is this uh, reservation jumper? Well, it's someone who stays away from the reservation. There's only one man and one horse. How much can they drink? This one's got a teepee set up, and a squaw and a young'un moved in. There's another brave waiting up on the butte, and he probably wants to move in with a squaw and family. It's still two families, all right. There's still enough of water. That's not the point. The point is, these Indians are off their reservation. Now, you know what that can mean, Mr. Cartwright. Yes, I know. I'll, uh, I'll explain it to Mr. Rossi. Nobody have to explain it to me. It's my land and my water. The Indians, they stay on my land. It's all right, Red Sky. You can go. Go back to your wife and the family. You stay on the land. Drink the water. And you, you, you know make trouble. I'm a United States a citizen. I know my rights. You know who's going to get off of my land? You. <laughs>
That's more than chicken bolognese. No. Hey, horses ain't good in Italian, huh? I know your eyes fool you, Mrs. Rossi, but there's only one horse. Oh, my God. Oh, you, that lady. You're beautiful, too. Oh. Yeah, you're gorgeous. <laughs> Making me so mad. He tie up my friend of the Indian like an animal. He making me lose my appetite. They spoiled it all fast. I can't eat. You lose your appetite too. What happened to the Indian? It was a bad thing. Huh? Come on, eat, uh, Giorgio. Well, I can't. Listen to the Indians, how they sing. <laughs> They're very happy, huh? <laughs> Make me very happy, too. <laughs> I got a single for you. Libya, 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 Again, thank you so much, and I like the house very Excuse much. my George, Emma, you know how I'm I am. Uh, <laughs> Candy? Yeah. Don't uh, stick around too long. Make a pest yourself. I'll, I'll be right along. Thank Bye, Andy. Good night, Good night, Joe. Good night, Joe. Good night. He's a nicer boy, this Candido. Look how nice they look together. Così, così. You know. I, I think it's time Regina get married. Oh, que far? What for? What's a hurry? Oops. Sorry. Why? Well, I don't know. You talk fine when you talk about horses and cows and Indians. If you like me, it's no reason to be sorry. Well, it's... Just that you're different. From a horse or a cow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Do you know our Italian custom? No. We don't take our feelings lightly. Neither do I, Regina. land. It makes me afraid. Sometimes I think I will never get used to the, the bigness, the cruelty I see here. Maybe I will never belong to this life. There is cruelty here, yes. Regina, look at the sky. It's big and black and empty, right? Well, there's another way of looking at it. It can be like a warm blanket on a cold night. There is gentleness here if you look for it. Uh, Regina. I have to get up early in the morning. Tomorrow I go see the Indians. Is it time we go to bed? Yes, Papa. Candy, maybe you better go with Papa. Sometimes he doesn't understand so good. Sure. I'll go with you, Mr. Rossi. Maybe I can be of some help. Help? <laughs> Thank you. I don't need the help. <clears throat> you can come if you like. Thank you. Night, Candido. Good night, Miss Rossi. Regina. Good night. Good night. Sì. 
His uh, friends, they come visit them, huh? Yahweh, Ikaki Mowaki. Oh, no, that's his family. Oh. Yahweh, Iwawapaki. What did he say? That guy prays to the great spirit of the sea, land, and sky. Yahweh, yes, Iwelolaki. To send gentle winds and rains that fall softly. It's beautiful. Red sky is a beautiful prayer. Is it just like a poem? And don't you worry. I'm your brother. You stay long as you like. Nicheni nati, tebele tanawa, lokwachi, yesha piege, pijo pi. Use of the water. You stay on the land. Why, brother, speaks good words. His land, our land. That's right. United States, a big country. It's a plenty of land for everybody. Kihaya chimabe, kikone na. Now, what's he say? Uh, he says your kindness will become a legend. Who? Kikone na. Well, what is that? He's given you an Indian name. What he called me? White man who gave us the land. Red the sky, non capisci. Come si dice? Red the sky, you misunderstand. You see, when I say you stay on the land, I mean you use the land. We use land, you see. Yeah. It's nothing to worry about, you see. They're just going to use them with the land. So, well, see, they don't intend to use the land. They think you've given it to them. Oh. This is it. We will plant seeds in land. Use land to grow food. See, it's a, it's a seed. Semi Grand Turco is a corn seed. <laughs> you know how to plant the corn? I plant. Ma, not like a Giorgio Rossi. Giorgio Rossi is a farmer. You see these so hands? Rossi, they... These are hands they handed a farmer. <laughs> My father is a farmer before me, and before him, his father was a farmer. Ma, come, everybody, you come. Giorgio Rossi is going to show you how to plant the corn. Yeah. Come on, come yeah. on. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Just make a nice and deep hole. <laughs> Is it hard to dirty? <sighs> then you push him in one seed. Not too deep, because you push him in too deep, it's no grow. Huh? Maybe it's a rock. It's too high, then it's dry out, you know? Then you make a little amount of dirt. Then huh? you push him in another one away. Push him in another one. So on and so on and so on. Huh? You understand? You got a question? Why question? Indians show white men how to plant corn long time ago. Uh, let's see. Well, I forget. Please excuse me, but uh, I have to go water the grapes. <laughs> I see you later, my brother. <laughs> my brother. My sisters. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Sì. Come to bed. Non posso dormire. All right, we talk if you can sleep. Vieni, vieni un po' qua vicino a me. Yeah, I, I think about the red sky. I think about his family, his people. How can I tell them to get off of the land? You talk good American. You just to say please, e loro se andranno. No, 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 non capisci. I make a mistake. Now the Indians, they think the land belongs to them. Belong to them? Ma come? Is it a place for the white grapes? Si. I can't tell them to get off the land. I think 
I remember when Ben Carter right, he said to us, we have to get off the land. <laughs> I say to him, I'm American citizen. I know my rights. <laughs> the United States is a big country. There's a plenty of land for everybody. I got a right to stay here. Red the sky. He's American citizen. Uh, he's American citizen even before me. Now, if it's a right for George Rossi, American citizen, why is it no right for Red the Sky, American citizen? Illogical, no? Oh, George. In the whole world, there's no one like you. See, si, George Rossi is stupid. No, you smart. Chito. Look, Giorgio, this is a big country. There's lots of land, lots of other places. Si. Ma testa dura. Why I not think of this before? Ben Cartwright. Mm. He got lots of places. Dunque, non ci pensare più e vieni a dormire, vai. Su. Vieni a dormire, caro. Su. So, all of a sudden, Mr. Rossi's got urgent to business with his grip. So, no, away we go. <laughs> Imagine trying to teach an American Indian how to plant corn. The minute he saw this easy clean, forgot what we came for. Well, look, once a farmer, always a farmer. Oh, good one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be better, cut, right? <laughs> I bring you some wine. Oh, I bring you a message. Regina, she says, say hello. <laughs> Say something funny? No, no. Boys, go on back to work. I want to talk to Georgia. <laughs> nice to see you all again. Hostess. How are you, Mr. Rossi? Hi. Giorgio, you try to teach an Indian how to plant corn is like me trying to teach you how to plant grapes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I make a little mistake. Yes, you did. You went up there to get Red Sky back to the reservation. And you wound up inviting him to stay. Well, it's no right to just to go in and tell a man he must leave. I have to have time to think. And what did you think? I, my, I make a mistake, another mistake. <laughs> I forget all about it, bring you wine. Vino de Panderos, I know offer you. A <laughs> migliore de vino tutto il mondo. <laughs> we'll have some Vino de Panderos a little later. I want to know what you have been thinking, Giorgio. Well, I, I think that the Indians, maybe they don't have to leave if they have some land of their own. Uh, but, but I only have a little bit of land. Giorgio. Even if I give them a little bit of my little piece, it's still not going to be enough. Giorgio, I but you, know you I got the more land than you can I... account. You want me to give them some of my land? Ben, you've been thinking the same thing. I've been trying to tell you this and get this through your head. It isn't what you would like to see happen. It isn't what I would like to see happen. It's what the United States government says mm -hmm. must happen. Now, they have signed a treaty with the Indians. The Indians live in some land given them by the government. This land is the reservation where they live, and they must live on that, or there could be serious consequences. What kind of a treaty is it says that the people got to go someplace where they don't want to go? This treaty has become a law. And we must obey the law, Jojo. You will admit to that? The law, he don't tell me what I got to do with my land. The man is a hungry. You want me to say to him, I don't want you to be hungry over here. I want you to be hungry someplace else. I don't know, Jojo. Of course, I agree with you. You know that I do. It's, it's just that I know what I'm talking about. Now, it, the longer you take to get Red Sky to go back to the reservation, the worse it's going to be for his family, and the more dangerous. Now, believe me. If you don't want to talk to him, I'll be very glad to go out. But why, why you got to talk? I can't talk for myself. Well, I didn't say that you couldn't talk for no, yourself. No, I'm going to tell you something. Red Sky make me his brother. Nobody tell the George Rossi his brother going to go, he's going to stay. Except the George Rossi.
Tu bois. Oui, comme il boit. Merci, c'est une origine épique. Il me l'a coupé. Mais où est Lorenzo et la Regina? Ils sont venus. Ne vous hit pas la porte avec la chaise. Quand nous allons avoir une réunion, c'est très important que tout le monde soit en temps. En fait, c'est très un-américain de être tard. Vous avez hâte la porte. Ah, sit down, we're going to have an exercise in the democracy. Hey, Papa, I was... Sit! Sit! Now, in a democracy, the biggest number is always right. So we're going to have a meeting. First, you talk, then I talk, then we vote. Don't hit the wall. Now, Ben Cartwright, he's a very good friend, eh? He's also a very smart man. He says that we should send the Indians back to the reservation. I say we should let them stay. Just a few weeks, maybe. You're the father. We do what you say. It's not the American way. First we talk, then we vote. Candy says that he... Candy says? I don't care what the Candy say. He's no member of the family. I think maybe you can't make up your mind because you... I can make up my mind. Hey, I make up my mind very good. Huh. How you think I raise a family can make up my mind? You ever raise a family? All right, Regina, now you talk. You don't listen. Who don't listen? Hey, I listen very good. I just know I can listen to what the candy says. Number one. You're going to tell the Indians to go, no? See. Si. Well, you put it off. So they think they can stay, no? See. Si. Candy says that you shouldn't put it off. Again, what the candy says. How many times I tell you don't want to hear what the candy says? No more. You want us to say what we think, but only if we think the way you do. You never let us finish talking. You stop Lorenzo, you stop me. Hey, hey. You don't talk like that to your papa. No, 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 let her talk. That's the American way. I just want to remember what she say. I don't want to know more about what the candy says. And one more thing. You still not too big for me to push you over my knee upside down? Oh, come on, please, Papa. Non incominciare, vai. No, no, no. I just don't like to hear her say her Papa's a tyrant. Maybe you like this candy too much, huh? Maybe you like to have him take care of you, put a roof over your head, take care of you when you're sick. No, I for some fuel. Regina! Viene qua! Regina! Regina! È qua! Yeah, he's really a fine figure of a man, isn't he, Hoss? Yeah, yeah, he is. He's, he's just rugged enough to keep from being pretty. <laughs> Have your fun, boys. I'm having mine. Well, Candy, I know you appreciate the fact that Regina is something very special. He's paying a call on the girl, Mr. Carr, right now, not Cordner. Oh, yeah, but that, that's just the way it starts out. And you get over there and you get to looking in them big brown eyes and then phew, the trap springs. Regina, what's wrong? Oh, everything is wrong. I don't live in that house anymore. He hates me. He hates you, too. Like I'm five years old, he treats me. Well, no more, la commedia finita. I won't go back. I won't. Well, well, simmer down now, Regina. What, uh, let's sort this out. You hate me also. Regina, nobody hates you. Oh, Candy. You love me, Candy. Only you. I work for you. I scrub the floors. I cook. I sew. Anything. Maybe in the beginning we don't have so much. Yeah, but... Oh, but look, Ozzy. He's speechless with joy. Yeah. Other young married people have less to start. Isn't it so, Mr. Cartwright? Well, Regina, I think before people get married, they should get to know each other quite well, and marriage isn't based on economic problems. But I love Candy very much. You do? Of course I do. No me importa se la vita sarà dura. We love each other. Um, uh, Regina? Uh, Regina? Look there. Why don't we, uh, why don't you stay here overnight? And then we can talk about this sensibly in the morning, huh? Come on, run along. That's right. I, 
must say, Hoss, that the boy has a lot more charm than we ever gave him credit for. Yeah, and all wasted. Very funny, very funny. <laughs> hey, you know, you know that, that little cave up on the hill where we used to play? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, with a, with a feminine touch, that, that could be awfully home. No, no it's just not funny anymore. It's just not funny. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fellas, all right. Now, Joseph, I want you to ride over to the Rossies and tell them that Regina's here. They're probably worried about her. And tell them that we'll look after her real good until the smoke clears. Right. Hey, uh, you know, Candy, maybe you ought to run up there and kind of calm her down. Hoss, you think you might make some coffee for all of us, huh? Yes, sir. Mm, a whole bottle of Brooks Shambu. Mm. Put the Indian on a rope. Your Indian? Was as good a way as any to get him here. He's my Indian, see. I, he live on my land. But you still not tell me why you have to always tie Indian up with a rope. Don't think I could have got him here any other way. Alive. You see, I caught him killing one of my steers. Non è possibile. I don't believe. Ask him. Is it true? Did you kill a steer? Hungry, squall hungry. Oh, Dio mio, Maria. Sì, Nostri amici sono e fame. Oh, poveretto. Diamogli qualche cosa a noi. Abbiamo tanta grazia di Dio. Adesso ci penso ah. io, eh? I've been through this, Mr. Rossi. Back in the Dakota Territory. Indians moved in. More Indians followed. They had to steal to eat. And that started the fighting. Bad fighting, Mr. Rossi. People were killed on both sides. I don't want that to happen here. We are kind of responsible, Mr. Sabin. We will pay for this deal if the Indian can have it. That's a good thought, son. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I'm the father. I make the bargains here, eh? How much do you want for your steer, Mr. Sabin? Twenty-five dollars. Vendaging. That's without... a fair price, Papa. I decided the fair price. I make the money, I spend the money. You spend your own money. I have no money. Uh, ecco, questa è, è un sacco di farina di Gran Turco. Prendetela. Potrete farvi tanta polenta e levarvi tutta la fame. Ce n'è per voi e per tutta la vostra famiglia. Povera gente. Uh, get your women down there. Take home that beef. Go. Tell you what, Mr. Rossi. I'll split the price with you. Split the price? What do you think, I'm a poor man? Huh? You think I can't afford Indians? Huh? Yeah. Uh, hey. How much for the next one, Mr. Sabin? No price for the next one, son. Oh, you mean the next one that she's for free, huh? If there is another one, I'll do what every man has to do when his property is threatened. Oh? I'll fight.
can make. Oh, we'll have a beautiful home, Candy. I'll get the door. That is, if it hasn't been moved. Mr. Cartwright, I have come to work for you. Lorenzo! Regina. It is good, Lorenzo. When Candy and I are married and we have a house, you can come and live with us. Yes? Marie, what are you doing with the clothes? What it looks like, don't you see? It's your children's clothes. Children who don't live here no more. Oh, uh... You want them to go without clean clothes just to because they don't live here no more? Huh? I teach my children to be clean, so I send them clean clothes. Well, but they're going to come back. Oh, yeah? When? Show me. Look out the window. You see them coming back? No, they don't come back because their fathers sent my children away. I mi figlio è cacciato. Ma calma, ma calma, ma piano. Ma che cazzo, tu, tu vuoi il parere degli altri? Tu credi ma non è mica vero? Howdy. Mr. Rossi? Is he, George Rossi. My name is Sam Kettle. I'd uh, like to talk to you. Mr. Kettle, please come in. May I present my wife, Mrs. Marie Rossi, and Mr. Sam Kettle. How do you, Mr. Kettle? Yeah, Mr. Rossi. Mr. Kettle, what I can do for you? You like to buy some wine? No. I'm here about Indians. Indians? Yes. I'm the government land manager and Indian agent, and I've just learned that you have Indians on your land. See, I have Indians on my land. Did you give them the land? No, no, I, I don't give them. I just to let them stay. That's good. You see, the government has a treaty with these Indians, and they're not supposed to leave their reservation. But they will leave it if anybody gives them property outside of the reservation. I'm sick and tired, Mr. Kettle. Everybody's telling me what to do with my land. The Indians, they have the right to stay on the land, and now you leave. Mr. Rossi, it's the law. I didn't make the law, but it's part of my job to enforce it. It's a bad law. Change him. Mr. Rossi, the federal troops will move in and take them off unless you send them back. Mr. Cattle, the Indians are going to stay in the land. Goodbye. George, why you be like that? Why you don't listen to the man? Why are you so hard headed? Listen to the other people too sometimes. Ma lo sai che c'è il testone? Testone dalla forza di cento cavalli. Anche i tuoi figli hanno cento. C'è qualcuno nel pollaio? Presto, presto! Senti che fai passo! Che succede? Io ho detto, aspettate, ti piglio, sai. Che succede? Io ho più Wendy, 
chickens. One of you English is stealing my chicken. Ah, uh, so what's a one chicken? One chicken? A Plymouth bar the rock? Ma come? I sent my stagecoach for the eggs. I hatched the eggs with a lamp. I raised the little chicks. And after all this, I'm going to take care of her. She's a little girl. A family, they're hungry, eh? Ti fame? Oh, sto diventando. Pigliate la cara, anche se vuoi delle uova, anche pillale. Oh, povera creatura, ma come sto diventando? Ma scemo, mi 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 scemo, Regina, e poi Lorenzo, e adesso Maria. Ma hanno piantato. E bravi. Che bella famiglia! Mm. Sorry, Giorgio, you speak English, eh? Why always everybody tell you what to do, eh? How oh, she so wanna tell me what to do? I decide what to do about the Indians, eh? I decide what's right and wrong. Lorenzo, this is the way I raise my son, eh? You tell your papa what to do, eh? You talk back to your papa. Regina, you beautiful girl. Why you always have to tell me can they say this? Can they say that? Don't you know your papa love you? In the Italian family, they raise it to respect the papa. Why you not can do that? Huh? What are you? Ain't a good husband, eh? I'm gonna build you a beautiful house. What I do wrong? I'm gonna buy you food. I'm gonna make it nice. <laughs> what I gotta do? And then, the kitchen is no place for a man. But it's Mr. Carlyle, she okay. come into my kitchen. She tastes that this is a no good. She tastes that is a no good. All the time come into my kitchen. I quit. Mm. I quit. Ah, si, 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 si. No mandi pure a lavar le camicie, a stirare i coletti. Alla cucina ci penso io. Vedrà che bei panzetti li farò. Ciao, Alla cucina ci penso io. Vedrà, vedrà che bei panzetti li preparerò. Oh, well, what? The... Looks like you got a little bit of a diplomatic problem on your hands, no? It... I sure hope the plan I have in mind works out. If it does, this will work out, too. Yeah, well, in the meantime, what do we eat? Sweet and sour pizza. Miseria. Miserable. Yeah. 
Basta, finita la commedia. Giorgio Rossi, you're just like a woman, you can make up your mind. Eh, 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 eh. You gotta do something about it. You gotta do something now. You gotta do something right now. Eh. Well, I came as soon as I got you out. Sorry it took so long. Well, government red tape, what do you expect? Well, no harm's been done. Rossi's Indians haven't got into any real bad trouble. Now, thanks to you, I can put them where they belong. Oh, are you free to go? Yes, just as soon as you can get there. Good day, my brother. Good day. Judge Yorossi is a comment to tell you that they make up his mind. I give you this land. I want you to use it. I'm American a citizen. I can give it to another American a citizen. I know my rights. It's a free country. Well, what is going on here? We move. Go to our son. Why? I bring you food. You don't have to steal it no more. And when you eat them up, you let me know I bring you more. But I want you to stay on the land. I help you. I help you plant the grapes, even if you want. I help you plant the more corn. Please, you stay. Man, no much good for corn. Oh, no, I see what is going on. Oh, Ben Carter, right, you come onto my land, huh? You tell them my Indians, they have to go back to the reservation? The reservation is like a jail. Now, Giorgio, hold on now. They're not going back to the same reservation. Not the same? Well, what do you mean? Well, uh... Well, Sam Kettle and I have persuaded the, the land bureau that they uh, they should add a, another parcel of land to the reservation. A new piece of government land, the, the Crow Lake area. That way they'll have the whole lake, all that bottom land, and... Well, plenty of fresh water and sweet grass and all that good game. I know land. Good place. We like to live there. We stay. Don't come here again. Is this true? Yeah. That's a God bless you. But take the food, the red sky. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. A salute. 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 Come on in, you know. And now, I have an announcement to make about my daughter, Regina. Oh, no. Uh, no, Papa. No? no? Why not? I changed my mind. Oh, come on, again? Filia mia, is it three times you change your mind? Ma che fai? What's the matter? Candy's a good man, but not like Italian boy. I better wait for Italian. <laughs> now, I want to thank my friend Ben Cartwrights for what he do for my Indians. <laughs> and what he do for me. 
George Rossi always get in a fix, and Ben Cartwright, he get him out. <laughs> so I want to tell you, from now on, George Rossi is a change man. No more fix. <laughs> For this, I drink it to myself. <laughs> well, uh, in that case, I would like to say something. I would like to drink to Giorgio Rossi. But Giorgio Rossi must remain always as he is. Here, here, here. Here, here. Chicken cacciatore. Molto <laughs> bono. Molto bono. You promised. You'll bring a top price. There's a shortage of good saddle stock around here. Oh, that's good. I still know gonna make a profit. Now, if it's all right with you, we'll uh, have the auction day after tomorrow. That'll give me time to get the handbills done. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'll take care of the handbills. Hey, yeah. Paul's got a good friend here in town that's in the printing business. All right. Day after tomorrow, then. All right, Jim. Here you go. Well, how soon can we get started? Well, I thought we could get over to the hotel and get cleaned up. Have ourselves a meal that hasn't been cooked over a campfire. Yeah, well, look, we, we've got three hours of daylight left. If we start it right away, we can get to the Ponderosa by Friday. We, we start moving that herd. On Monday, right after the Saturday night dance. He read our minds. Yeah, he's getting pretty good at it. Of course, he's had a lot of practice. What about it? Ah, sure. sure. Go ahead. Good deal. Hey, and uh, say hello to the Widow Manning for me, will you? She hasn't changed her mind. You had a whole week to think about it. I was sure you'd be seeing the light by now. Now, she's told you she ain't changed her mind. Why don't you let her alone? Hey. I wouldn't. You might get hurt. Mrs. Manning? Ben. Ben Cartwright. What are you doing in Gunlock? Well, I uh, came here to make a little business with pleasure. First of all, to say hello to an old friend, <laughs> and then to order some handbills. The lady's busy. Why don't you take a walk and come back later? <laughs> Look what's going on. Sorry, Ben. Well, that's not your fault, Ruth. Uh, you better not do that, Mr. Cartwright. You might mess up that bandage. Huh? <sighs> well, it's not too bad, is it? Nasty bruise. Small concussion. Sure, I'd like to know who those two were. Later on, eh, Mr. Cartwright? Now, if any dizziness or nausea occurs, I want you to send someone for me at once. And I want you to spend the next 48 hours in bed, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> We'll see that he does. All right. This way out, ladies. Can't I talk to him for a moment? Well, certainly you can. Tomorrow morning. There's a bell on the table if you want anything. Oh, I'll be all right. Thank you, Ruth.
Cartwright. Oh, good morning, good morning. What are you doing? Well, I was, uh, I was looking for my hat. It's right over there. Oh, thank you. Dr. Adams said you were to stay in bed for at least... At least 48 hours, but he was being overcautious. Oh, is uh, Mrs. Manning up? Up and gone hours ago. Oh, well, then I'll see her at the clarion. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You gotta eat. You gotta keep your strength up. You wouldn't want all this food to go to waste. Hmm. Well, you, uh, you make it almost impossible for me to refuse. Thank you. Mrs. Manning says you were best man when she and Willard were married. Yes, that's right. Ruth has been running the paper for three years now. She works much too hard. Hmm. I have the feeling that she'd be lost without the clarion. That's what she says. But I know better. Ruth has had more than her share of trouble. What kind of trouble? It ain't right for a housekeeper to say, Mr. Cartwright, but if you're the friend I think you are, you'll see that she gets a lot of help. Well, Mr. Dobbs. Just where are you going? Oh, I'm going to work, same as usual. You feeling all right? Sure. You don't look so good to me. Kind of green. Sickly. Be a good idea if you went home and went to bed. As green as you look. If you go to work now, you might not get through the day. Maybe you're right. You got the word, huh? One scared little man. Just pack up and leave as fast as he can. Call for a drink. Come on. All right, turn around. You're under arrest. Hand over your guns. I don't see any star on you. Yeah, no marshal's badge either. This is a citizen's arrest. I had over your guns. Come on. Come on. Mister, you're making a big mistake. Let's move to the sheriff's office. All right, move. How you doing, Sheriff? Howdy. Took these off Montana Slim. Man spends his life at crooked gambling. You'd think he'd do a better job of mocking cars, wouldn't you? <laughs> what can I do for you two? Well, the man says we're under arrest. He's holding a gun on us to prove it. The devil he is. I know Walt Leak, Jeff Cotton. I didn't catch your name. Cartwright. Ben Cartwright. Thought I was a law around here, Mr. Cartwright. Since you're doing my work for me, maybe you better tell me what this is all about. Assault and battery, trespassing and destruction of property. This assault, who's it on? Me and a couple of others. You willing to sign a complaint? That's why I'm here, Sheriff. All right. Your turn. What do you two got to say? Nothing. Except he's wrong. He sure is. Well, there you are. Two against one. You take this to court, the judge will throw it right out in the street. Sheriff, I have witnesses. Do what the man wants, Sheriff. Let Judge Tabor decide who's telling the truth. Cartwright. Ben Cartwright. Cartwright. Ben. Mr. Dobbs, I hope I didn't... 
start you. It's not your fault. It's not hard. I'm wearing my nerves on the outside of my skin. I've got page two locked up. I'll have to change that. Two of the ads have been canceled. Kelly's Mercantile and... The Eagle Saloon. You knew about that? I guess. Old Leek was waiting on the sidewalk this morning and told me to go home. That's the reason I was late. I went around back so they wouldn't see me come in. After yesterday, I can hardly blame you. Yes, sir. Hey, you're supposed to be in bed. The doctor I know, said... I know what the doctor said, but right now I need both you and Henry in court in exactly ten minutes. In court? But why? Well, I'm signed a complaint against Cotton and Leek. They're going to stand trial. I need you both as witnesses. I guess you better get your hat, Henry. Well, you, you two don't need me. I mean, the two of you will be enough. We do need you. Three will be better than two. Well, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. You always did face trouble head on. Well, Ruth, I just can't let those two get away with it. It isn't only those two. Henry doesn't want to testify. Why not? Because he's afraid. They're trying to take the clarion away from me, Ben. That's what this is all about. Who's trying? The man who owns just about everything else in Gunlock. You'll meet him in a few minutes. Circuit Court, Gunlock County, now in session. Judge Seth Faber presiding. Well, everybody's here. I guess we can get this little matter cleared up. Mr. Lee? My partner and I are trying to buy the clarion. No secret about that. Mr. Cotton stepped into the back shop to take a look at the equipment. I did shake hands with the little feller. Maybe I squeezed too hard, but I didn't mean to hurt him. Mr. Cartwright walked in in the middle of things, and he didn't know what was going on. I slipped and grabbed this case, and it fell down, and uh, the next thing I know, this Cartwright's trying to kill me. <laughs> Cartwright went pure loco. <laughs> he uh, knocked Mr. Cotton down and then tried to draw on it. <laughs> Mrs. Matting, had both these gentlemen made you an offer for the clarion? Yes, and I told them... You answered my question. Thank you. Mr. Cartwright, did you knock Mr. Cotton down? Yes, I did. And did you draw on him? No, I did not. Oh, I see. Well, there seems to be a difference of opinion on that point. However, it appears to the court that there was no real harm done. That the cause of the trouble was, was an accident and misunderstanding. The court finds the defendants innocent of all charges. However, as a gesture of goodwill, Mr. Cotton and Mr. Leake are willing to pay for all damages, including... Mr. Tabor, there was no accident. Mr. Cotton deliberately pushed that type down onto the floor. Dobbs was the only one close enough to see what happened. If it happened like you said, why didn't you bring him along to testify? Well, Mr. Cartwright? He didn't wish to testify. And I'll tell you why, Mr. Tabor. Because he's afraid of those two thugs of yours. Mrs. Manning, this is a court of law. You'll speak when asked to only. These two couldn't even afford to buy a notebook, let alone a newspaper. <laughs> they work for you. Mr. Cartwright! I find you in contempt of court. That will be $20 or 20 days. You're absolutely right, Mr. Tabor. Contempt is what I feel. Forty dollars or forty days. Yes, sir. Fine turnout today, Ben. One of the best I've ever had. Men who own the big ranches are here. They need horses and can afford to pay for them. You should do very well. Mr. Cartwright. I didn't expect you to still be around. Oh, Mr. Tabor, I've got some horses up for auction here. Oh, I see. The handle says 10 a.m., Mr. North, and it is now 5 after. Time to get started. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's time.
Gentlemen, ladies, it's my pleasure to offer at auction 10 of the finest horses we've seen in Gunlock in a long, long time. All right, let's show them how that black beauty moves. Well, there's our first offering, that handsome black gelding, a prime example of Ponderosa bred saddle stock. Now, there's a real stockman's horse, fast, nimble. One dollar. I haven't asked for a bid yet, Mr. Tabor, but if I had, you have to be joking. I'm not joking. I bid one dollar for that black gelding. All right, I have a dollar bid. In spite of what Mr. Tabor says, a $1 bid for that fine animal has to be a joke. Come on, gentlemen, let's be serious. You know that horse would be a bargain for $100. All right, who'll open the bidding at 75? Do I hear 75? $65. 60 55. I bid one dollar. Either get a higher bidder or sell me that horse. Mr. Tabor, you can't be serious. You advertise these horses for sale at auction to the highest bidder. No ifs, ands, or buts. Now get a higher bidder or sell me that horse. Who'll give 55? 50 dollars. Do you want to tell him or do you want me to? Cartwright, a man puts something up to be sold at auction. He can't bid on it himself. Unlock county law. How long has this law been in effect? A oh, long, long time. More than two years. And if the lady has any idea of bidding for you, she better have the money in her purse. Yep, cash in the barrel head. That's the law, too. Have a dollar bid. One dollar. Going. Going. Hold to Mr. Tabor for one dollar. Bring out the rest of them. I'm in a horse buying mood. I knew about that auction law, but I had no idea that Tabor would use it the way he did. It's not your fault. Anyway, it's not the end of the world, so don't worry. You bred and raised those beautiful horses, brought them all the way up here. Tabor stole them. Oh, he, he bought them. Oh, I admit that a dollar a head could be considered robbery, but it's legal and binding. <laughs> I didn't mean to cry. I don't want to cry. I won't cry. Well, it might do you good to cry. Either that or swear, and I doubt if you have enough words for that. Living here in Gunlock and running McLaren, you'd be surprised at the words I know. You sure that Tabor is responsible for this? I know he is. He ordered it to be done while he and Cotton and Leek and that tame sheriff of his were at the auction where everyone could see them. So you know, but you can't prove, huh? I know or suspect a lot of things about Mr. Tabor I can't prove. Why does he want the clarion? Because he wants everything he can get his hands on. Every ranch, every freight wagon, every stick of lumber. Henry, what happened? Hmm. Who did it? Nobody, ma'am. I just sort of stumbled and fell out in the street. 
Look at this. Good type thrown all over the floor. Anybody who did this ought to be tarred and feathered. I'm right. Sorry, ma'am. Look, the reason I come is I just got word that my brother's mortal sick. I gotta leave Gunlock, ma'am. It's all right, Henry. I understand. You, uh, want your pay. Well, ma'am, if it wouldn't trouble you, it sure'd help me out. Of course. Right away. Hope your brother gets well soon. Me too, ma'am. Thank you very much. Much obliged. It's the end of the paper. Well, we'll get another printer. I've had six printers in the last four months. You know, one of the printers didn't stay long enough to even say hello. Some of Mr. Tabor's friends met him at the stage. Well, I've got newspaper friends in San Francisco and Virginia City. No, Ben. Even if I wanted to go on, I couldn't. When a person dies, there's a funeral, a eulogy, mourners. A newspaper dies. Nothing. Well, the clarion isn't dead. For me, it is. When Willard was alive, it was read and respected. Now, the advertising, the circulation's gone. I've poured three years of trying. I, I, I have nothing more to give. Well, you're tired. It's been a hard day, huh? We'll talk about it again tomorrow. No. Mr. Tabor's won the war. He can have the clarion. But for a price. He'll have to pay well for what he wants. Do you want Tabor to have the clarion? No, but I haven't the strength or the money to fight him. Oh, I know. You're going to offer to lend it to me because you knew Willard and because we're all friends. No, Ben. Mm -mm. I'm very tired and all I want to do is rest. Well, what I was thinking... You know, how would it be if I were to try to sell the clarion for you? I mean, I think I'd probably drive a much harder bargain than you could, you know? Would you trust me for that? Of course I'd trust you. Yeah. That's a good idea. And right now, I'm going to take you home. Get some of that red thing down. Come on. Cashier's check for the full amount. That's much more than I ever thought Seth Tabor would pay. Oh, then you're pleased. More than pleased. I'm wildly happy. <laughs> this calls for a celebration. <laughs> Coffee and rum cake. Cake that won the blue ribbon at the county fair. That'll do you both good. Ruth hasn't been eating enough to keep a bird alive. And Mr. Cartwright's been staying at the hotel where the food would choke a goat. I think we're being summoned. I think so, too. But first of all, you've got to sign this bill of sale. That's for the buildings and the equipment. And, of course, the goodwill. You signed right there. Goodwill? <laughs> There's not much of that left. Oh, a lot more than you think. Mm -hmm. There we are. Good. I can start packing now. Yes, you can. Oh, thank you. You're, uh, gonna leave Gunlock? Yes. And I'm glad to go. With Willard gone and the paper gone, I... I can hardly wait to leave. Thank you for making it possible. My pleasure. An old friend. A good friend. There's no one else like you. truck's already at the depot. I walked down there myself just to be sure the drayman didn't forget. Really wasn't necessary. Well, I like to be sure. 
while you look up my cousin Ellie in Sacramento. Of course, the very first thing. Ellie knows everybody, and she'll see to it that you... Seth Tabor was going to buy the clarion. Well, actually, you uh, you told me that. I just didn't correct you. Deliberate evasion, and that's the same thing as a lie. Oh, oh no. Ben, the clarion's dead. There are no subscribers, no advertisers. I could at least persuade myself to let Tabor pay for the bits and pieces of what he destroyed, but I cannot take money from you. <laughs> well, Ruth, you already have. The only thing that's left is the name out front. Tabor, Tabor has this whole town terrified. They're, they're even afraid to read the clarion. Well, I'm going to try to change that. You're going to? How? You don't know the first thing about running a paper. Ruth! The stage will be leaving in a few minutes. All right, I'll be there in a minute. In two minutes. You know, I'll never understand it. Any man who owns a pencil thinks he can run a paper. Ruth, they're loading passengers. The stage will be leaving. All right. Let it go. What about your trunk? Well, take it off. I'm going to help. Well, I, I, I couldn't ask you to do that. You didn't. I volunteered. Well, you may not want to when you find out what I've been doing. Now, Ruth, here's a copy of the first page of the paper that you were going to put out. Here's a headline. Jeb Anderson builds a new barn. Uh, the Hermione Ladies Club is having a box social. Not exactly earth-shattering. It's local news. I spelled all the names correctly. It's the first rule. People like reading about themselves. Well, I've written a new headline. Henry? Yeah, here it is, Mr. Cartwright. I set it up in tight and ran off the proof. Thank you. Honey. I guess it wasn't your brother who was mortal sick. It was the clarion. Well, now that you have a man editor, you think it has a chance to live. Well, no offense to you, ma'am, but if it don't, it's going down fighting. What do you think, Ruth? Ben, you can't print that. There are libel laws. Seth Table will sue you for everything you own and get it. Truth? is an unassailable defense against a libel suit. You sound exactly like Willard. No, I should. It was Willard told me that. Yes, sir. If you've got the story, I'll set yes, it up and tight and run it off. Story? May I read that? Corruption, malfeasance, and dishonesty were demonstrated in the court of justice of the peace, Seth Tabor. Well, I must say, Ben, you don't beat around the bush. Newspaper man. Ha! You don't even know how to spell. Gently now, gently. Yeah. Good type is like a fine woman or a spirited horse. They both need gentle handling. Didn't know you were a horseman. I'm not. The man who taught me was. What he told me, I'm passing on to you. All right. Gently does it then. There's a notice tacked on the post office wall. Hmm? All government land in Gunlock County will be open to homestead in 60 days from today. Hmm. Hmm. That's, that's almost two-thirds of the country. That's over a million acres. Oh, from Washington. Addressed to the editor, the clarion. Oh, would you open it, please? A 
copy of the same announcement. What's the letter say? Washington would like it printed on the front page of every newspaper within a thousand miles of Gunlock County. The land commissioner in charge will be named later. Mm. Pretty important job for somebody. Whoever he is, he'll be the most powerful man in this part of the country. If he's not the most honest, he'll be the richest. <laughs> That's why Tabor wants a clarion. So he can use it to get himself appointed land commissioner. He sent a telegram to Washington. I've got a friend there, he might be able to help. I'm bringing in men to homestead these claims and to do the assessment work. And then uh, sell them to you? For a dollar each, yes. Dollar a section for land. It's better than buying horses for a dollar a head. If that's your idea of a joke, Mr. Leak, I don't like it. Now, Sheriff Knox's holdings will be here. Mr. Cotton's will be here. And Mr. Leak's, if Mr. Leak is still with us, will be here. Now, between us, we'll control the water in this whole wide area. And having the water, we'll control another 10,000 acres of fine grazing land. If you're appointed land commissioner, Oh, I will be, Mr. Leak, before the week is out. Hey, Mr. Tabor's got friends in Washington taking care of that for him. Mm-hmm. And who's going to take care of Cartwright? Why does that concern you, Mr. Leak? Because Cartwright owns the clarion now. And he's carrying a ten-horse grudge. And he just might use it to wreck your pretty little wagon. Don't bet on it, Mr. Leak. <laughs> Come on, the fire's out. Let's go. Get these buckets back. Thanks for your help. Glad to help out. Better, Dobbs? Much, thanks. All that work, gone. Oh, man, what have I done to you? It's not the end of the world. Not yet. Don't you see? We can't. There's just no way. I got the wagon loaded. I went over to the livery stable to get the team. And when I got back, the wagon and the papers was burning like fury. Oh, forget it. It's all over now. Thank you, ma'am. I needed this. Mr. Leak tells me you had an unfortunate accident here, a fire. Eh? Sorry to hear that. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tabor. Oh, we lost a few papers, but uh, we'll survive. Come in. Yes, well, at the auction, I did get angry, and for very good reason, I believe. But I did. <laughs> I did take advantage of you. And I'm here to make that right. I'll pay you whatever you say your horses are worth, Mr. Conrad. Well, you've already paid me, Mr. Tabor, and as you yourself pointed out, the transaction is legal and binding. One hundred dollars a head. I'm afraid the transaction is closed. All right, Mr. Cartwright. We'll forget the horses. But Gunlock does seem to be an unlucky town for you. Until now. Tomorrow will be much better. I'll give you a large profit on a short-term investment. I'll buy the clarion at four times what you paid, Mrs. Manning. Four times? Mm-hmm. Why? So you can use it to uh, make sure that you're appointed land commissioner? The job calls for a man who knows the problems of Gunlock County, and I do better than any man alive, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> I should 
think you do. You created most of them. Yeah, you sure did. You know, you run Gunlock County like it was your own private kingdom. Mr. Cartwright, if you or the Clarion try to stop me, your next of kin will regret it. I suggest you read tomorrow's edition. I already have. I'm sorry, Mr. Cartwright. I never should have let him get a look at this. It's all right, Henry. It certainly is. Henry, lock up that press. We got a paper to put out. I thought I told you to keep an eye on the Clarion. Cotton's watching it. It doesn't take two to watch one building. Besides, something you ought to know. I saw half a dozen men carrying around pieces of that paper. Folks around here want to know what was in it that got it burned. You think that bothers me? It should. There was a lot about you on page two. It tells how you got your start driving one of Ace of Butter's freight wagons. How you got to be wagon boss, then partner. How you bought the freight line from Ace's widow. After Asa hanged himself. That part was news to me. That's only part of the story. The smallest part. Cartwright is getting to be a nuisance. What did you expect? You find him for contempt, you stole his horses, and you burned his papers. So I did. If you'd let him get a decent price for his horses, he would have been long gone by now, and you would have owned the clarion. We all make mistakes, Mr. Leake. The difference between us is that I don't worry about it. I'll still own the clarion. I don't see how. There's a lot you don't see. Without Cartwright here, I'd be taking a helpless widow's last possession. Even men who know better would side with her. Oh, Cartwright. He owns timber, cattle, horses. The biggest ranch in Nevada. No people enjoy seeing a big man cut down. It's human nature. When I take Cartwright apart, all of Gunlock County will stand up and cheer. It'd be a good trick if you can do it. I can, and I will. Yeah, a bullet would stop him. But it would also get you hung for murder. Now wait a minute, wait a minute. The only way I see is to burn that whole building. Press, paper, type, and all. Mr. Leake, there's some hope for you yet. Sometimes you do fall over the obvious solution. <laughs> Thank you. Pretty, it's nice to see you again. Has been a while. Too long. It's too late to get your ad in tomorrow's clarion. Next week will be fine. Pretty. Gunlock Mercantile. He wants to run a half-page ad every week. Oh, good. Yeah. Pretty was only the first. Next came Hob Kelly. Kelly's livery stable came in and bought an ad. Bought something. He left money on the counter. All right. Mr. Leake, I guess we're going to do it your way. Cotton, you stay here. Knox and I will give you a hand. Three of us will be left. You were so happy before. What changed you? After what happened to the last issues, I'm wondering if these papers will get to the post office, the stage. They will. We're going to load them right outside that front door in broad daylight where everybody can watch.
are still going. They'll be there till daylight. Well, we don't have to wait for them to leave. If we light the fire now, they'll smell the smoke and put it out. Oh, I doubt it. This building will go up like a haystack. They won't be able to save it. Pick out a place and light your fire. Do what I tell you, Mr. Lee. Cartwright over to the jail, and it'll be a legal killing for trying to escape. No, Mr. Tabor. Oh, Sheriff, now you cooperate and you'll have leaks land in your own. You'll be a very wealthy man. Well, if there's nothing else, Mr. Cartwright, I guess I'll head home. Fine. You have a good night's rest, Henry. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Well, these will go to the president and the cabinet members. Of the they get them. Oh, they will. You had an answer to your telegram. No. I'm afraid Mr. Tabor has that telegraph operator under his thumb. I don't think that message is ever sent. I was afraid of that. But these papers will get there. I'll take them to the post office in the morning myself. See that they're stamped and put in the mail bag. Mr. Tabor wants a government job. I don't think he's going to interfere with the mails. What was that? your own man, huh? Not me. You. Bad blood between you. He gave you a lump on the head, so you split his skull open with a pistol butt. Killed him. Speak up, Sheriff. Tell him. You're under arrest. Murder. Hand it over. Hold up in court, you know. Any court, not even yours. Get him. Get him! Move! Drop those guns. <laughs> well, ma'am, you better drop your gun. You're helping a murderer to escape, and that's a felony, ma'am. Drop it. Yes, ma'am, I'll, I'll drop it, all right. Wasn't my idea, Mr. Cartwright. Wasn't my idea at all. never were any bullets in that rifle. I'm terrified of loaded guns. Well, no goodbyes. I, I hate goodbyes. So do I. But I do what? And no thank yous. I hate thank yous. All right, but I'll have to bite my tongue.
wish I could stay. I do too. But you, you have the Ponderosa and I have the Clarion. As a favor, can't we keep in touch this time? Of course. I'll write you regularly. And of course, I'll be keeping in touch with you regularly because I'll be reading the Clarion, which I'll be reading every Wednesday when it comes to mail. We seem to be in your debt. Thank you. No things necessary. We just ran a feller off. <laughs> That's quite a lot. That's enough, gentlemen. Toby, these men are friends. Look, mister, my name is Joe Cartwright. This is my brother, Hawes. You happen to be riding on our property. Now put the gun away. Toby, put it away. My brother's being very foolish. He's Tobias, and I'm April Horn, and we're both very grateful to you. Really, we are. I'm uh, sorry, gentlemen. I thought you might be part of the gang. Gang? We only saw one man. Well, there were two until one's horse pulled up lame. Oh, the one you saw was just catching up with us. They ambushed us about three miles down the road. Guns and gunmen, gentlemen, I have to admit, they scare me. Nothing strange about that, mister. They scare us, too. I doubt that. Well, April, we better get moving. While we're talking here, those uh, gunmen would circle on ahead. May I ask where you gentlemen are going? Virginia City. So are we. Toby, if we ask these gentlemen nicely, maybe they'd ride along with us? Be glad to. You notice anything peculiar about that horse? Hmm? A horse? No, I didn't notice anything. It wasn't winded at all. Not even sweated up. That horse hadn't run no three miles, or two even. Half mile at the most. That guy made a mistake about the distance. You know, you get a little nervous when you're being shot at. Yeah. Dang poor shooting. There wasn't a scratch or a bullet hole in that buggy, no place. Well, they're bad shots, that's all. I'll tell you one thing, that April Horn is a good-looking girl. Yeah. Now, that's nice. I care very much for being shot at. Oh, I think you'll find it doesn't happen too often. Well, once is, is more than enough. How long are you going to be in Virginia City? You don't waste any time, do you, Mr. Cartwright? I try not to. No, it's just a lot of nice places I like you to see, a lot of nice people I like you to meet. Well, that might be possible if my brother's business allows us to stay in Virginia City long enough. Let's hope it does. Hmm. 
Yes, uh, this will do very nicely. It's the best in the house. Tell me which bags are the ladies, and I'll put them in her bedroom. No, 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 never mind that. We'll uh, take care of that later. Now, listen, I need a bottle of bourbon, a bottle of sherry, and a bottle of brandy, the very best available. Keep the change for yourself. Oh, thank you very much. My name's Alex. If you need anything else, just ask for me. Fine. Where's your keys? <laughs> Nob here. We have a view of the ocean from almost every window in our house. You can watch the clipper ships stand out to sea. My brother and I have a ship, you know. And watch the fog roll in. Yeah, I've been there. That fog is wet and cold. A little. Mm hmm your brother and I were just telling polite little lies about our hometown. Uh, Ma'am, if you knew my little brother better, you'd know he can't tell polite little lies. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd be pleasantly surprised. The accommodations are quite good. Wonderful. I know there are several banks here. Is there one you care to recommend? Yeah, we use the Virginia City Bank across the street. Well, good. Would you uh, be good enough to introduce me to one of the officials? Sure, I'd be glad to. These two loans are fine. You can notify the parties involved. Hi, Mr. Bishop. Well, Joseph, how are you? Hi, what you. can how I you? do for you? I'd like you to meet a friend of mine, Mr. Yes. Tobias Horn. Mr. Horn, it's a pleasure to meet any friend of the car drive. Yeah, this is Mr. Horn's sister. How do you do? I'm afraid I don't qualify as a friend, not yet. My sister and I just met the car drives on the road from Carson about two hours ago. I'm with Horn Enterprises, home office, San Francisco. President of Horn Enterprises. Yes, since the death of my father. I'd like to make a deposit. Oh, of course. $30,000. That's a lot of money. Carrying that much cash uh, can be dangerous. So I've learned. It can also be very helpful in doing business in a new town. It's very true. <laughs> Just a second. Mr. Horn, if you'll just sign here, please. It'd be a good idea to go down to the sheriff's office, tell him what happened on the road. I agree. Mr. Bishop, thank you again. Joseph, thank you. Mr. Bishop. Mr. Horn. Brandy, April? I would love some. bottle of that, too. How'd you get in here? That door was locked. I leaned on it. How long you been here? Well, in this room, about 10 minutes. In Virginia City, about two weeks. It's in and out. We'd have been here sooner, but we had to report an attempted robbery. Oh, did you? Hey, you're driving pretty good. You were shooting pretty good. Comforts. Should have seen the room they gave me. Did you look at the herds? Yeah, first thing. Cartwright's got plenty of prime cattle. I got the water and food packages planted. The horses? Ready? Well, that's it then. Friday it is. Uh uh. Thursday. Are you trying to give the orders now? No, just correcting your mistakes. What mistakes? Well, he's a bachelor, and he works late. That much you got right. But you didn't dig deep enough. He's also a joiner. He belongs to lodges, and he never misses a meeting. What's that got to do he's with... He's got a lodge meeting every night of the week, except Thursday. So it's Thursday, or a week from Thursday. All right, it's Thursday. Brother Tobias is a little upset. How about you? Me? Oh, it's been a long time. Much too long. We'll have to correct that, huh? Yeah. Well, thanks for the drink. Wait. Those water caches. You got them marked on a map? Right here. See ya. There we are. 
Thank you. Be right back. Fifteen hundred head of cattle. Take a few days to round them up. There you go, Bob. Gentlemen, would you uh, give us some coffee? Or some brandy? Uh, not now, thanks. I have some coffee. Well, since my drovers will uh, move the herd to the Sacramento Valley, there's no reason they can't help with the roundup. Huh? Now, the uh, current market price is uh, 1650 a head, is that right? Well, for, for one of the range cattle, yes. And I understand you as a reputed to be uh, better than that. Yes, I would think so. Well, if uh, my superintendent, Mr. Spain, finds that to be true, I'll give you uh, $18. You're still talking about run of the range cattle, huh? Uh, what do you want? We figure our cattle over $20 a head. I'll give you 19 Gentlemen? Cash. On the barrel head. All right, what's your deal? I would like that brandy now. Excuse me. Hey, Roy, come on in. Howdy, Joe. What you got there? I found this stashed under a rock about a mile up the hill from Three Forks. Ma'am, I wonder if you could identify this. Yeah, let me see that chair. Now, I was uh, too busy driving to do much looking, but uh, this could be the vest the gunman was wearing. I'm sure it was. And I'd say that he wanted you to see this vest and not him. Well, at least there's one gunman that uh, carries a change of clothing. But now he could be wearing just anything, and that's going to make him a lot harder to find. Mr. Horn, cashier's check made out in the amount of $28,500, made out to Ben Cartwright, and the balance of your account, minus the service charge of $2 for the check. I feel guilty, Mr. Bishop. All the trouble I've caused you for $2 profit. <laughs> Good service, minimum fees. Our way of persuading you to come back soon. Oh, we'll be back, Mr. Bishop. You can count on it. Thank you. Good check, sir. Ah, thank you. Now, to uh, complete the transaction, would it be possible a, a glass of your excellent brandy? I was just about to suggest it. Yeah, telegram for Mr. Tobias Horn. Yeah, come on in. Excuse me. Mr. Horn. Langerford told me to get this out here as fast as I could. Said you'd pay me perfection it. Toby, what is it? What's the matter? Our clipper ship, the West Wind, was lost with all hands in a, in a North Pacific gale. 
It's terrible news. I'm sorry to hear that. More than just the ship. Captain Jess Bedford was the best friend I ever had. Toby, tell them the rest of it. No reason to. Then I will. The bank demands full payment within the next four days. You see, the West Wind was carrying a cargo of silk, paid for with money borrowed from the Pacific Bank, a short-term loan. We do have insurance. But not enough to cover the ship, let alone the cargo. Toby is too proud, Mr. Cartwright, but if that loan isn't paid in full, Horn Enterprises will go down with the West Wind. Well, what I have to do is find a buyer for 1,500 head of cattle. If one of your men could hitch up our buggy, we have to get to Virginia City and on to San Francisco as fast as possible. May I see that? You don't have to worry about those cattle. I'll buy them back. Yeah. Oh, I... I can't no, ask. No, please, please. very well mean the difference between financial life or death. Oh, uh, but it's, uh, it's made out to you. It'd probably speed things enormously if, if you were there to explain things to uh, Mr. Bishop. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Mr. Bishop is very touchy about rules and regulations. I'll ride in with you. Tomorrow. Don't worry about that. He's in there. Harry loves to work late. Harry! Oh, thank you, Harry. Ben, you called me just as I was about to leave. You know the horns, of course. Yes. Uh, Mr. Horn is not going to be able to buy the cattle. Uh, for whatever reason, we'll explain later. But he would like to have that, uh, that cashier's check cashed. Well, the vault's been closed for about an hour. Well, I hate to ask, but it's very important that we leave for San Francisco you tonight. Do it, well, I guess I can oblige. That's very nice of you, Harry. Still, Mr. Bishop, don't even try to move. You move.
he's doing nicely, all things considered. Took a small caliber bullet from his left shoulder. An inch lower, an inch to the right, and he wouldn't be here. Paul? Paul, can you hear me? Paul, what happened? Killed Harry Bishop. Tobias. Sean. Cold blood. Who shot you? A girl. Uh, a pop gun danger. Take it easy, we'll get him. Uh, very tricky. Very, gotta be careful. Dangerous. Gotta be careful. Just the sedation I gave him taking hold. No, I, I, He'll I, sleep I, for 10 or 12 no, hours. No. Oh, boy. Let's go. Uh. Oh, hi, Roy. How is he? Oh, I think he's gonna be all right. The deputy found the back door to the bank unlocked when he was making his rounds about 11.30. That's the first we knew. Yeah, that whole routine with the $30,000 and the cattle buying, the telegram, it's all just a plan to get in the bank after it was closed. Yeah, did anybody see him leave? Well, Tobias and the girl were seen driving south in a buggy. Uh, I calculate that gives him about seven hours ahead to start then. You getting the posse together? Well, they're saddling up now, and I've ordered you a couple of fresh horses, if that's all right with you. Yeah, let's go. Should be about daybreak time to get to the edge of town. Rope corral on the top of the hill. Some grain sacks, some water buckets. I must have stashed the horses there for a few days. You see any tracks up there? Yeah, three sets heading south. Boys, let's go. south when we lost the tracks. I think our best bet is continue south. I'm not so sure. I think we ought to split up. They might have headed northeast. Across the desert? Yeah. Joe, that's a three-day crossing. There's no water holes for the first hundred miles. They couldn't carry enough water for them and the horses, too. Besides, they got a woman along. Yeah, there might be water at Sand Butte. At this time of year? Maybe so, but as slick as they planned this whole shenanigan, they would never make that mistake. Uh, that's just the point, Roy. Slick as they planned it, they just might have figured on crossing the desert. They might have water caches. Well, it's possible, but I think our best bet is still to continue south. I want to head across the desert, see if I can find the tracks. I'm going to go with Joe. I think splitting up's a good idea. If you don't find them, we will. All right. You getting a dust off? I'm trying. Uh, that's all there is for two days. Well, good. I'm not even through the first layer yet. Now, don't worry about it. In three days, you'll be swimming in champagne. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to ask yet, but how much did we get? I haven't had a chance to count. I don't know. Maybe half a million. Maybe more. I still can't believe it. I couldn't help thinking all the time, though. All of Toby's great big plans, how they failed. 
All the money he's lost. Not just his money, all money. All the money our father left us. Well, that's behind you now. You're a rich woman. About time we moved it. What's the hurry? Horses, need water and rest, so do we. Well, that posse just might not believe that decoy swing we made to the south. We're way ahead of them. I want to stay that way. Finish up with the water, April. What's that? You think of everything, don't you? Yeah, I try to. Let's move out. Like I figured, they're heading out across the desert. Posse is way south of the now, too. Well, we got seven hours to make up. They don't care who they killed, do they? Yeah. Too far ahead of us. Yeah. But they got water and we ain't. That do make a difference. Yeah. Look, we got two canteens. Neither one of them are full. It's not enough water for two men and two horses, not even for one day. I use less water than you all go. A drink before we go, it's a long way back. No, you're gonna need it. You got ammunition? Yeah, plenty in the saddlebags. I'll turn that posse around as soon as possible.
Find anything? Uh, stone bruise, I guess. He's been favoring this hoof. I'm sorry, I had to ask you to stop. No, no, no hurry. Nobody's crowding her. Dust and dirt. I must look terrible. Not to me. Not ever. Bottom all this time, we'll be through the worst of that. It's a frightening place. It's hot and empty and endless. Quite a ride for Toby and me. Doesn't look like it bothers you any. Yeah, well, I've had a lot of country like this. Hey, you know, I saw a picture in a store once. There was a girl with a blue dress on. She was standing on a balcony, and she was looking out over the sea, and uh, I just keep thinking, you ought to be in a place like that. Thank you balcony and cool wind and the sea. What I wouldn't give for that right now. I imagine there's lots of balconies in Europe. Maybe we'll see them all. You and me, huh? That horse will be all right. Yeah, well, from now on we'll start favoring the animals. Ride them two hours, walk them one. Walk them? It's an old cavalry trick. Saves animals. Cavalry or outlaw? Both? I've been in both. Puts me one up on you, doesn't it? I was in the cavalry. Scum. Border scum, and you've been shining up to him. Why? Because I want to get out of this place alive. And he is the only one that knows the way. This is good. Scared his horse away. I think that was Joe Cartwright. Is that supposed to matter? Well, the other day it seemed to me that it might. Well, that was a long, long time ago.
What's the matter, April? You cold? I'm cold. Here. Thank you. All day long, it's so hot, I can hardly breathe. I could have waited for that sun to go down. Now I am freezing. Well, that's the desert. Be cold by morning, and hotter than the hinges. You sleep good? Not very. At least today it looks like it's gonna be a little cooler than yesterday. Uh, don't let this haze fool you. The time it burns off, it's gonna be hotter than yesterday. Hey! Take it easy with that. I thought you said you had water all across the desert. I have, but the next cache is 20 miles away. That water's gotta last us all day. Get out. Who was it? Cartwright, who else? Not a drop left. I thought Spain shot his horse. How did he catch up a foot? He had all night while we were sleeping. How could he get this far? He didn't have enough water. Neither do we. We got about a pint left from the canteen my horse. 20 miles to the next cache. No water for the horses. They won't last long. We'll ride them far as they can go, and then we'll walk. Yeah. can't make it. I know where the water caches are, so I'm going. But only one of you. Wait. We're all in this together. And we gotta stick together. Three of us can't make it. Same with you, April. Your choice.
much farther. <laughs> a long way. A long way. A long way. One swallow is one swallow. That's all that's left. Drop the gun. Both of them. Now go easy on the water. That's all I got. You were bluffing. Yeah, that's right. I was bluffing. But I have empty canteen and an empty gun. And I kind of figured you wouldn't be able to make it across the desert without having a cache of water somewhere. A man hides a cache. He hides it near a place he can spot from a long way off. Well, he's not going to tell you where it is. Oh, yeah, he'll show me. Unless it was a die of thirst. There was a time out on that desert where I thought I'd never want to see a fire again. Yeah. It was a little hot out there, wasn't it? I hope to tell you it was warm. You sure look good to me, brother. You look like a whole troop of cavalry moving across the desert. Well, I had that posse with me. No, I don't mean the posse. I mean just you by yourself. You're a beautiful sight to see. Yeah, the desert is full of mirages like that, isn't it? <laughs> now, what is beautiful is to have you two back, and now that the money's back, and. Also, to know that those two are locked up in the Virginia City Jail. Yeah. Little brother, you deserve a drink. How about a brandy? Uh, no. No brandy for me, host. Thank you. Uh, I'd really like a great big, cool glass of water. You got no idea how good water really tastes. You ought to try it sometime. 